For the hip exam, we're not doing as much inspection in and around the hip, so we'll start straight away with range of motion testing, uh, strength testing, um, palpation, and special testing. Um, there's not really a lot of neurovascular exams we're going to do around the hip because it's a sensitive area of the hip. So I think that um, we start by doing, often start with range of motion. And like the range of motion with other joints, we're going to do a passive range of motion in the hip. We'll do flexion, we'll do external rotation, we'll do internal rotation, and then we can do extension if we want to. We'll show you how we do that. But since we're here, we'll do external rotation, which should be at least 60 degrees, and internal rotation, which should be at least 30 degrees. Uh, we'll compare to side to side. If the one side is decreased, you can compare to the other side to see if there's any decrease in range of motion. So definitely we want to do range of motion. We're going to have the athlete rotate towards the wall that way. And we're going to start, can you come scoot back to the middle of the table? And you can palpate the uh, gluteus muscles that go over the greater trochanter and this makes up the bursa of the greater trochanter and the iliotibial band. And we can at this point check um, extension range of motion as well. If, the, if you're holding the patient's back but not lifting them up off the table and their leg stays high, this is a sign of tightness of the iliotibial band. We call this an Ober sign. If they have this, you might also do palpation right over the iliotibial band, which is coming down here and attaching to Gertie's tubercle. And as you palpate, as you flex and extend, if this causes pain, that's a sign of um, iliotibial band tendinosis. Now, um, when you're on the side also, you can palpate uh, piriformis muscle as well as palpate the ischial tubercle. Ischial tubercle is where, um, ischial tuberosity is where the hamstrings attach. Now, if you roll over on your um, front, all the way on your front, roll over. The end of the gluteal fold and the end, beginning of the hamstrings is right connected to each other at the ischial tubercle. If patients have an avulsion injury of the ischial spine, this will hurt right there. If they have a pop this it'll hurt right there. If they have a hamstring tear, it'll hurt right there. One way to check for strength of the hamstrings is we'll uh, flex the knee. Can you bring your heel towards your butt? Okay, we can check on this side. And you can see the, the hamstring muscles, semitendinosus and biceps femoris coming up here, and they should have good strength against resistance. Now, um, if we want to measure them on the other side, can you roll over? We can check strength of the rectus femoris muscle. So the quadriceps, three of the muscles actually attach to the femur, but one of them attaches at the anterior inferior iliac spine right here. And there's another one, sartorius, that attaches to the superior spine. So the rectus femoris is the only one that attaches at the hip. And if you can lift this leg straight in the air, you're tightening the rectus femoris, and it'll often reproduce pain here, or if they have a tear, they'll be weak. Um, another test that you might do is, can you bend your knee and uh, external rotate, and then hold up. Now we're checking more of the sartorius muscle and strength. So that's probably enough for strength testing in the hip, as well as palpation. We've palpated the anterior superior leg spine, inferior leg spine, and the greater uh, trochanter. That's enough for palpation, as well as the ischial tuberosity. Now, there's some special tests that we can do for hip if there's no findings here. One other area that we can check, and you have to be a little cautious, is the adductor muscles. And this attaches at the um, uh, pubic symphysis. And so if they may be tender at the pubic symphysis or weak here, we might want to check resistance of the of adduction of the knee across. So can you bring your knee across? And that's isolating out the adductor muscles, which do adduction. And if they have an injury at the pubic symphysis, like osteitis pubis, uh, fractured pubic symphysis, or a tear of the adductor muscles, all that can cause pain right there. Um, sometimes patients can get hernias around here too, and you can see femoral hernias on this exam. If you're doing that, you have to disrobe the patient to actually see that and palpate that with gloves on. Special testing that can be helpful includes scour signs. So for this, we'll axial load, the, the hip and internal, external and internal rotation. So if external and internal rotation doesn't hurt initially and you scour them, it hurts. That suggests a intraarticular process or a femoral neck stress fracture. Um, other ways of detecting fractures actually are to use a stethoscope and palpate, put the stethoscope on the pubic synthesis and scratch test and you can detect different sounds isolated. Um, uh, the patella and the pubic synthesis to detect um, fractures of the femur.